Hello guys, hello and welcome to Survival Russia. So we're heading up to the camp today on hunter skis this time. I've not been at the camp for a long time so uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see what it looks like. It should be buried in snow. So camp is right over there. I'm pretty ex interested to see if the shelter have held up because we had a lot of snow and we had the plus degrees also so looks a little bit strange from here. As usual, I'm gonna show you how it is. Ching! It's been bent down pretty well. I can see we have had a very very small snowshoe here using the shelter for a while. That's pretty cool. I mean that is that is small. It might not look as like much, but it is actually two feet of compressed snow we have here. I mean, that's not two feet of snow here, but it's a two feet of snow which have been compressed. Because we have some plus degrees and there's been a lot of dripping from the trees and everything from this spruce have fallen down on the shelter and just compacted. It looks quite nice in here. There's one, two broken arches. As you might know, underneath here, there's a plastic top, like a membrane. So I don't really need that much snow on top. I definitely don't need two feet of compressed snow, that's for sure. I of course plan to get out here much much earlier, but uh, as I say, many things, many factors played in so I couldn't make it. So my original plan was to shovel the snow off the roof and just pack it on the sides where there's no plastic membrane. Uh, you can say yeah, the sides are definitely covered by now. <laughs> I'll try and get in, see if I can lift it up with my back just to, just to see how it is. No, I think we just leave it as it is. So, so camp has been dug out and fireplace cleaned out and everything. So uh, yeah, I of course plan to come and do this gradually and not end up in two feet of compacted snow. I think I'm gonna cook some food, make some tea and uh, I'll try and uh, redeem myself from the flint and steel fire from uh, the survival shelter. So hang on and uh, let's get the fire going. Yeah, so today is only the it's, a, it's only the basic belt kit, so uh, it's a small silky pocket boy and K-pop BK2. This is why I have the BK2 in the belt rig. It even took this four-knotted spruce pretty well. It's a good all-round knife, the BK2. Like we have some napalm smoke going again. I just love this setup. It's so awesome. Burns for a very long time and easy to reignite and the also worse it was today. Super awesome. Tea is boiling. Have a cup of tea, have a good time at the camp.
What an awesome day! Back at the camp at last! No, the shelter is actually not that bad. I mean, it held up to this huge pressure, so uh, I'm pretty happy. Let's just say that uh, Grandfather Frost, he redesigned it a little bit, so uh, I think it's safe enough. But anyway, I actually plan to eat this buckwheat with uh, beef. I think I'm gonna save it for later, but uh, let's see. If I can redeem myself from the flint and steel and charger fire with brews tweaks from uh, last time from the survival shelter video. So while I'm trying to get another brew of tea going, then uh, you can see up there, spruce tweaks. And let me show you how I normally do it. Last time, as I said, was uh, I picked up some uh, pine and spruce tweaks from a hunter shelter, hunter blind I made long ago, but uh, yeah, it was not so good. <laughs> it's just spruce tweaks. And some more finer spruce twigs. And this bundle is much bigger. I think the problem last time could also be that the bundle was a little bit small. But it's always good to train these things once in a while. Because there can always be variables as you could see. But what I do is so like, like break, it, break it here. Once. And then one more. We have all the fine stuff in the middle here. Take some of this fine stuff here. Whoops. Pack it in the center here as well. Piece of file. Jagger. Small piece of very, very sharp flint. There's much macho stuff going on about yeah, minus 20 is not cold and minus 30 is also not cold enough almost. This counts for Russia as well of course, but the fact is that minus is minus, minus 2, minus 5, minus 10. It's cold and it makes everything more problematic. Boom, and we already have it. And as always, if I edit, which I will because it can take a long time, I'm not cheating, I do this for myself, and uh, I just bring you on for the ride here. As you can see, grows already pretty fast. And we will of course, as I did last time, also transfer to another ember, to another piece. Yes, it burns very, very hot. Let's just say it like that. Chaka in the bundle here. Sometimes your breath can be a little bit moist or humid, and that is not always good. Not when you make fire, anyway. The chaga caught on pretty fast. Maybe Grandfather Frost said a little bit, I'm sorry, Lars. <laughs> you can have an easy chaga fire now. Yes, he did. Because this was fast. Oh, maybe it's not really there yet. Remember, this is only twigs. There's no grasses and uh, hours of processing, scrapings and all this stuff. This is why Chaga is uh, in my kit, always. 
That was some survival skills. So not much more to say than thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Please check the links in the description to videos, to Facebook and whatnot. And uh, as always, get out and train, get it done. And see you next time here in Russia.